welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I reupholstered this couch. That's right, you heard me. I reupholstered this couch all by myself. Hi, my name is Sittal and I love lots of DIYs, mindfulness, minimalism and slow fashion. And if you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe down below and hit the like button if you like this video. I post a video every Wednesday. Now, I've been reupholstering since I was a teenager. My mom used to get us to help her reupholster our dining chairs. So ever since then, reupholstering or the idea of reupholstering never really frightened me. Now, to a lot of people, reupholstery is very scary because they fear ruining the couch or the couch will not look the same anymore. See, when you're doing a reupholstery, you're not actually making the couch from scratch. So you're not making the structure, you're just putting the covers back on. It's just like sewing a cushion cover. So if you have a couch that's lying around that is so worn out, do not throw it out on the curb or give it away for free or sell it for a really cheap price or chuck it away and get a new one. Save that couch, watch this video and I would love to see how you tackle your project. Now without wasting any more time, let's get started. And this is what my couch looks like. It doesn't look too bad here but it's actually really badly stained and it was just time for a makeover. So the first thing that I did, I measured the couch every corner, every seam and I marked it down on a piece of paper. This is so that when I buy the fabric, I know how much to buy. The next step is to buy the fabric and this is the fabric that I chose. It's a bit like toil but it isn't really, it's very oriental. I absolutely love it. And then I removed all the hardware and ensured that I kept everything in the same bag so I don't lose any pieces or any screws or bolts and nuts. Next, I use a pair of scissors that I do not use for cutting fabric. It's something that's lying in my garage. I use it to pry open the staples at this stage because I actually want to reuse this black cover for the bottom of the couch instead of buying a new piece of fabric. And in some areas, I use a rotary cutter where I didn't mind cutting the fabric. But then you need to keep in mind, if you use a rotary cutter and cut the fabric shorter than what it is, when you actually do the cutting of your upholstery fabric, you need to leave a bit extra so that it can go over the staples. Next, I use a seam ripper to seam rip all the seams on the couch and I made sure not to cut the actual fabric because I'm going to use every single piece here for my actual patterns when I cut the pieces out of my upholstery fabric. You need to remember all the extra fabric or strings or whatever it is that you remove because when we remove it, we need to put it back exactly the same way we removed it so that the couch looks like it's professionally done. Before you get on to cutting your fabric, you need to repair any damages. Mine is a little damaged here, the sponge at the bottom, but I chose to leave it as it is because it's going to be covered by the cushion anyways. And then I continue seam ripping each and every single piece of fabric and I labeled every piece by alphabets here. Um, and you can do the same thing, use a marker pen or something like that to label all your pieces of fabric so that you know where to put it back on the couch. And of course, take a break, binge watch some YouTube videos and chew your nails while you're at it. Why not, right? And next, it's time to cut your fabric. I use the actual pieces that I seam ripped from the couch as my pattern pieces and I use the exact same seam allowance that they had on the couch. I just remembered to label all pieces once I cut everything out. Next, I ran all my 
cushion pieces under the overlocker now i definitely recommend not skipping this process because when you overlock the edges and when you open your cushions to throw it in the washing machine it wouldn't fray if you don't have an overlocker i recommend using the zigzag stitch on your washing machine or try and use a fabric glue some people use fabric glue to avoid the edges from fraying Before I did the stitching, I made sure all my pieces were right side facing the way it's meant to be, the way it was meant to be based on all my labels and double check just so I didn't make any mistake because the last thing I wanted was to seam rip all my mistakes. And I remembered to do a test fit before doing a top stitch or finalizing my stitching just so if I made a mistake it would seem or I could seam rip it easier once I was happy with the test fit I snipped every single corner if I came across a corner before I did the top stitch now when you snip the corner make sure you don't snip through the actual stitch and when you do this top stitch Top stitch it about a quarter of an inch away from the initial seam. Top stitching will allow the fabric to sit the seam to be even more strong and it will also look more professional so that when you put the couch together it will look like it was professionally done. Here I show you how to sew a cushion piece, really easy, sewing a zipper onto a cushion is not that difficult. Make sure you have your fabric facing right side together and if it has a pattern, make sure you have the pattern facing the correct side. And then do a basting stitch along the side where the zipper is going to go. A basting stitch basically means stitching at a um, extended length. Um, the, I use the most length that stitch length that my fab, my sewing machine would allow me to do and then I iron the seam open with my fingers and lay my um, zipper right side facings but before I do that I make sure that I sew the ends of my zipper so that when I move the zipper up and down it wouldn't come open from the actual zipper because I am reusing these zippers from the actual couch and it doesn't really have that lock at the end of it and then once you're happy with laying the um, zipper right side facing the seam use a zipper foot to sew the zipper on and next use a seam ripper to seam rip the basting stitch Get rid of all the small bits and pieces of basting stitch on your fabric and then turn it inside out with the zipper open and sew all along the other three corners with a normal stitch, not a basting stitch, to finalize the cushion. Do let me know in the comments below if you're enjoying this video so far or if you found my tips on sewing a cushion with a zipper easy to follow. And here comes the moment of truth guys, cover the couch, exactly just the same way we did cushion covers, we are here to cover the couch. Cover the couch exactly the same way you removed it, take your time to do this process, it is, it may take a little longer than expected, make any extra um, changes that you want. Once you've put your cushion covers, feel free to jump on your cushion to fluff and fit it nicely. I used my handy dandy loop turner to string the actual string that was on the couch through the loop so that I can staple it exactly the same way it was before I removed it. 
I used an electric staple gun and I definitely recommend you using an electric staple gun as well because when I was younger we used to use one of those manual staple guns and after doing a whole lot of stapling your hands would actually hurt and become a little swollen and sore from all the stapling. So having the right tools in other words would just help your upholstery process just be a whole lot easier. I use my handy dandy loop turner so that I can pull the fabric out from inside so that it sits the way it was when I removed it. And of course, staple away. When you do your stapling, always start stapling from the center. Make sure you pull the fabric taut but not too tight, just nice and then staple from the center and move out to the sides so that you avoid any bunching up of excess fabrics on either side. And here you see me reusing the last bot uh, cover that I had to cover up the bottom. And um, you can always buy a new piece of fabric. It doesn't really cost that much, but I just chose to reuse it. And then of course, I got my little man to help me with putting the legs back together. He was, he just loves fixing hardware and using a drill. He was just so amazed at the whole transformation and just kept calling the couch, our new couch. And that's it guys, I hope you did enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed doing this project. I am actually going to use this couch as, um, as a centerpiece for my next Zen Room makeover. So hit the bell notification button so you get notified for my next week's video. It's going to be uber uber exciting. And also if you did like this video, I would love for you to hit the like button below and share it with your friends and family to help me grow. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.